So in case you are wondering, Tawny, oh my God, is this another crazy ass full moon or new moon or whatever? What the hell is going on? I do believe that this full moon is a good kind of crazy. So we actually have uh, some good news today. <laughs> And yes, in case you were wondering what my shirt says, it says I am with the hippies because I am in spirit, okay? All the time. If you're new to my channel, my name is Tawny Michelle and we do tons of cool spiritual shit over here, so, and astrology, of course. But if that is your jam, make sure to subscribe before you leave and make sure to give this video a thumbs up and comment down below and let me know what the fuck's up like are you feeling this pisces energy are you feeling the themes that we go over i really love to hear your guys's feedback and it really helps me out when you comment down below let's keep the conversation going down below don't forget and yeah we are not all love light twin flames and unicorn shit over here so please keep that in mind i do like to talk about all sides of the spectrum sometimes dark sometimes light you know because that's part of life anyways happy pisces full moon guys let's talk about it so if you're new to one of these videos basically we talk about the full moon and what we can all expect for this full moon no matter who you are no matter what your sign is where you're from um, and basically the themes that we're all going to see this is this first part where we talk about the full moon and what's happening is the real meat and potatoes of this video okay so keep that in mind because the second part is really a reiteration of the first part just a little bit more specific as to where in your life, right? So in the second part, we go over each sign, okay? And your rising sign will resonate most, so make sure to listen to your rising sign. You can listen to your sun and moon signs too. You may resonate with some stuff, but your rising sign will resonate most. Also, really quick, some of the transits that I briefly talk about in this video, I'm actually gonna be doing a whole nother video on in the next few days, so be watching out for that. It's gonna be a big video where I'm gonna be making some predictions regarding this upcoming Mercury retrograde in the world. Also, if you don't already, follow me on Instagram because I talk a lot on there about what's going on in the world and how it relates to the astrology and give my opinion on things as I also do on Patreon every week for $5 and up members uh, where we do a live and you get to ask questions we get to do a back and forth we go over the charts for the upcoming week and what you can expect and talk about all the crazy shit in the world so if that's also something you're interested in make sure to check that out too. And let's get into this Pisces mother effing full moon. So the Pisces full moon happens on September 20th, which is this Monday. It happens in the evening, um, at least for me, it's gonna happen around 8 p.m. Monday night. So in case you wanted to know. So you should be able to see the chart. And this is basically the Pisces full moon. So as you can see, the moon is here in the sign of Pisces and the sun is here in the sign of Virgo, which makes this a full moon. A full moon is when the sun and the moon are opposite of each other in the sky. So they're in opposite signs, right? So what is Pisces? What themes can we expect, right? Well, the difference between Pisces and Virgo, Virgo is an earth sign. It's very practical. It's ruled by Mercury. It's very analytical. It's all about the details and prioritizing certain things and rearranging certain things, taking apart certain things and putting them back together again to make them work in a new and more efficient way. Whereas Pisces is just like, we're going to let go. We're going to go and you know, do our own thing, frolic through the field, like go swim out in the ocean and just let my float go wherever it goes and we'll just figure it out, you know? Whereas Virgo's like, oh, well, you may float off to where someone can't find you or you get lost and you're stuck out in the ocean. Like you should tie a rope to this or you should have a plan, you know? And Pisces is like, no, we don't need no plan, man. Like we're good, we got this, you know? Um, Pisces is, a water sign, a mutable water sign. So it is like the water signs, the water sign of the water signs, basically, right? It deals with waves, right? When you think of mutable water, mutable deals with going in different directions, right? So when you think of mutable water, you think of the ocean because it's like waves crashing against each other, right? And what this, what Pisces is about, because Pisces is ruled by Jupiter, is going inward, connecting with the emotions, connecting with emotional fulfillment through spirituality or ethereal realms. 
through transcendence of the physical. So Virgo is here to learn about the small details of the physical and to perfect it or control it or learn how to maneuver it, right, manipulate it. Whereas Pisces transcends the physical and really focuses internally. And this is where, you know, Pisces is the last sign of the zodiac. So this is where we're really realizing like, oh, all is one, one is all kind of thing, right? Like this is where we're really transcending, letting go and having more faith and belief in ourselves and in something greater than ourselves. And so these are some things that we could definitely see, okay? Especially because uh, the moon is going to come across Neptune right before it makes a full moon. So basically, we're definitely going to see a level of woo-woo, spirituality, weird shit, right? Like uh, shit that is not a part of the norm, right? Pisces can also deal with imagination and, you know, seeing beyond the physical, right? So Mercury, or I'm sorry, not Mercury, <laughs> Neptune there also adding a certain layer to that is like, oh yeah, like, you know, you may be getting intuitive messages this day. This may be a massive wake up call. This may be breaking out of some illusion that you've been in or taking off some kind of rose colored glasses or putting them on, you know? This may be a time where you finally see hope in something that felt hopeless, right? Um, or where you finally see some kind of coming together. There are things that we can also notice though with Neptune is escapism, martyrdom, sacrificial kind of energy, you know? So we do wanna be careful with that. <laughs> we do wanna be careful with that. Uh, but I definitely think that this is going to be a time where we are possibly letting go of something or moving beyond something. That definitely uh, gives a little bit of hope there, right? A little bit of hope. So. When we want some more context about a full moon, if we wanna figure out, okay, what the fuck else does this mean, right? Like that can be pretty vague just looking at the Pisces energy, right? Then we want to look at the ruler of Pisces, which is Jupiter, right? And Jupiter has been in Aquarius and Jupiter is in Aquarius right now. And Aquarius is the sign of groups and people and experimentation and those on the outskirts of society those that are exiled from society. Also like-minded people. Aquarius also deals with progression. Aquarius can have kind of like a very experimental energy and can be very fixed and set in its ideas and ways. And so with Jupiter in the sign of Aquarius, I think some things that we could notice with this full moon are certain groups or certain ways of progressing by coming together or by uniting. Um, and I know, crazy, right? And this is hopeful. This is like best possible case scenario, okay? So just saying it's a possibility. Um, <laughs> some themes that we could see are faith in something larger than ourselves or faith in the collective, faith in unity, right? A coming together because of a shared common belief or a shared common hope in something. Integration of like-minded people because Pisces also deals with integration. Um, it deals with being kind of set free from the physical. And we may see kind of like a blending of faith in groups of people or, uh, you know, progression to some extent. On top of this though, and this is why there's like so much more going on for this full moon than just the full moon. Um, and anything else going on is going to be intensified by this full moon. So it's important to look at everything. So Jupiter will be in a trine with the planet of Mercury as well. Okay. And so this is where things get interesting. So Mercury is chilling in the sign of Libra, right? And uh, about to go retrograde this week on the 27th. So do remember whatever comes up during this time is going to come back around. It's not finished yet, right? Uh, so not a great time for like signing any big contracts or doing anything like making permanent decisions right now because they may not be as permanent as you think, right? Anything from the 6th until the 27th is going to be under reflection for the next several weeks. So basically though, for now, uh, Jupiter is in a trine with Mercury. Jupiter in Aquarius, trine Mercury in Libra. What the fuck does this mean, right? 
Mercury in Libra is the mediator, right? Mercury is the messenger, and in Libra it's the mediator. Mercury is already somewhat of a mediator, and that's what they have in common. So Mercury in Libra is like definitely the mediator, right? Um, it is trying to mediate different sides. It is trying to um, discuss different things, see certain things. It's also being shown other sides, right? It's also communicating about different sides and communicating about what's important and uh, to everybody and sides that aren't being seen, right? And so with Mercury trining Jupiter, this could definitely be us coming together or two opposites or unlikely sides coming together or joining for this common goal or common unity. And we could see this happening in the world some, um, in some way, shape or form. Uh, we could definitely see a kind of blending of energies, a blending of opposites to come together because we have the same ideals or we have the same way of thinking. And if not, you can also see this in your personal life in some way, right? Like where something that you thought was opposite or different or one way, you actually see it in a new way, right? And this Pisces full moon could be awakening us to the fact that, hey, look, whatever you think or whatever you're looking at outside of you and saying that's my opposite or that's not me guess what it is you right so what are you rejecting within yourself that's really um you that, that's that you're being shown external to you if that makes sense it's like everything external to you is a mirror and this mercury retrograde in libra is going to show us that it's going to show us where we need to start integrating, which is I think why we're having this full moon right before the Mercury retrograde, where we need to start integrating these parts within us that are divided because that is where we are seeing the manifestation of it in the world, right? And so whatever ideals that you have about progressing um, society or progressing your life in general or making some kind of change, you have to become those ideals and you have to find common ground. You have to start looking for the similarities rather than the differences, right? And so this is where we can start seeing and empathizing with other sides, with those that are maybe being exiled or not treated correctly. Um, those on the other side of certain social movements or issues or um, whatever, you know? The problem with this, right, where we are trying to kind of blend these different ideals and we are trying to like mediate and find these like this common ground and you know to come together like as a in a, in a collective sense right or the process of coming together i mean i'm not saying everybody in the world is going to be like kumbaya bitch you know what i mean but it, it's going to be like i think that there's a good possibility we could see um, certain groups that were very different start kind of almost blending, goals start aligning, you know what I mean? There's a common denominator here in some way. So people from different walks of life basically for a shared cause, right? So um, there's definitely some kind of integration of opposites happening here. This could also be some kind of announcement as well, some kind of news um, coming out that shows us a different side of something. Um, and I also have some really big news about this Mercury retrograde. I will say some of it right here because I was like shocked when I realized this. Mercury is going retrograde the same spot that it went direct last year around this time. Um, well, last year when it was in Libra, which was during the election. <laughs> so um, I'm just saying I'm not getting into a big debate here on the fucking election because I'm not a political person. Um, I mean, obviously, I see what's going on in the world, and I don't agree with things politically, but um, it's not, I'm not, like, sitting here saying one way or the other with the election. I don't think politics is necessarily our answer right now, and I think Pisces is really going to show us that over the next few years. But um, anyways, I do think that um, it's just noticing patterns, and that pattern from last year is coming back in some way to finish something. So I would not be surprised if we got some kind of other side that we hadn't been getting before, basically, or some kind of information came out that we hadn't seen before that flips the narrative. Basically, moving on, on top of this, and this is the harder part of this full moon in Pisces, we have, we have Mercury also in a 
pretty rough aspect, which is a square, with Pluto in Capricorn. So Pluto in Capricorn is the dismantling, disruption, disturbance, corruption, you know, lies, um, just really deep, dark shit within the foundations and the authority that rules over our world and societies. Pluto is really bringing out deep-rooted issues uh, that are exposing the cracks in the foundation of our structures, of those in power, the elites, those in authority. And so with Pluto and Capricorn squaring Mercury and Libra, right? This is definitely big because Mercury retrograde, Mercury's gonna station retrograde, it's gonna go retrograde while squaring Pluto. So this isn't over, you guys. Like this is like the start, this week is the start of like the next month long thing, okay? Like whatever starts this week, <laughs> really whatever started on September 6th, but this week is kicking it off, right? we are not going to see finish for quite some time. So do keep that in mind. Now, Mercury is the messenger. It deals with communication, logic, information. It's kind of like the mediator in Libra. Then we have Pluto, this kind of corrupt, like darkness happening within the authority structures and foundations that run our world. So what the fuck does this mean, right? Like how are some ways that we could see this play out basically? We want to watch out. We, we could definitely see a digging up of information with this square. Pluto is not going to like Mercury mediating in some way or bringing out information in some way. So information will try to be controlled. Information will try to be controlled, repressed, uh, hidden. Uh, we could definitely see some kind of censorship going on here threats. We could also see uh, a lot of corruption being revealed, another side that a lot of people weren't seeing. We could also see a lot of pressure and fear for people to pick a side or make certain decisions, um, which we're already kind of seeing, but I think that's going to get more extreme, especially within the U.S., uh, because this is happening in the second house and the 11th house of the U.S. So this is definitely going to be some corrupt shit happening, okay, in the world um, on, a, on a big picture level, right? Necessarily on, I mean, some of this stuff could happen in your personal life, I guess, too. But on a big picture level, we're going to see um, threats, loss, you know, uh, disruption and a disturbance of the peace, basically, right? Um, kind of like, Mercury's trying to show a different side that is being hidden, and Pluto and Capricorn doesn't like that, right? It wants to control the narrative. It wants to control the um, illusion that is that people are buying. It wants to control the rose-colored glasses that you're wearing. It wants you to keep those on. And so Mercury and Libra is like, no, like people need to know about this. I'm gonna tell people, you know? And so there's definitely going to be a lot getting dug up. <laughs> a lot of social justice uh, themes happening, a lot of uh, social issues, possibly a crisis of some kind. This is going to be really, really big, but I think what it's actually gonna do, it's whatever it does, it's gonna have the opposite effect. So I think that um, it, it's going to expose a lot. This Mercury retrograde is literally about truth being revealed. It is literally about things being exposed. It is about integrating opposites within you and without, not letting other people run power moves over you and control your perception of other people. Something that Libra is good at, it will make up its mind about somebody on its own. It doesn't need somebody else to tell it, oh, you, you don't trust these people. These people are bad people and they're doing this and they're doing that. Like, no, Libra is like, oh, I'm gonna go see what's up with them, them because I wanna figure it out for myself. There is a devil's advocate in Libra and we have to remember that. Like, there is a, a, an energy of like, well, hold on, let me go figure this out for myself instead of just trusting your word for it, right? Pluto and Capricorn doesn't like that. It's like, no, these are the rules. This is what I'm telling you to do. You need to do it this way. Venus, the ruler of this Mercury retrograde is in Scorpio. So it's like, no, bitch, we're getting to the bottom of this shit. We're getting all the way down to the roots. I wanna know what you have hidden in there, right? And so keep that in mind. Um, we could also see a lot of 
changes or endings within certain alliances, certain relationships, um, some deep, dark things needing to be talked about within relationships, within connections to others. There's definitely going to be a lot of corruption revealed. And um, on a personal level, we may notice some deep conversations that need to be had. Uh, we do need to be careful not to take things to extremes when we're communicating. Uh, we could get really hurtful or really like be very triggering, like almost on purpose, right? And that's another thing. These transits, some of these transits this week are kind of triggering. So do keep that in mind. Like, um, but these triggers are being brought up for you to go within and address them so you don't have to turn around and keep getting triggered all the damn time. You know what I mean? Like, it's not necessarily other people's fault if they weren't intentionally trying to harm you. You know what I mean? Like, if you're triggered, right? Like, you can't control other people's feelings, right? Point blank period. You have to heal them within yourself. And this Pisces full moon is a chance to do that, okay? So... Anyways, so two, well, one more thing I want to talk about really quick, and then we will get to the signs. We have Venus in uh, Scorpio here, moving into its opposition uh, on this, or well, this week, basically, near this full moon, uh, with Uranus and Taurus. So what does this mean? <laughs> So Venus is in Scorpio, where she does not like to be because it's Mars's sign. So she's like, it's like switching houses with someone you're like, that's literally your total opposite. You know what I mean? Like you like things clean and like tidy and like very eloquent, and nice and like charming. And you go into somebody else's house and it is like a shit show. You know what I mean? Like clothes everywhere. Um, you know, the pipes are fucking broken. Venus is in a not so great place, right? Like she does not like being from her perspective, right? Like she does not like being there. It's like living in a tunnel, right? And um, I don't know, like maybe she's in maybe she's in the city when she actually likes to be somewhere off in a mansion or something right and so venus in the city though is like okay well i can't just sit here and be depressed the whole fucking time like i have to do something fun i have to feel good right and this is where she could get a little wild in scorpio where it's like where she could get tempted to do things that she wouldn't normally do or that she doesn't like all the way agree with or doesn't have a lot of time to think about because she is not in a very she's not in her normal element right so she's like yeah let's go get a tattoo on my face and yeah let's go get a bunch of piercings and like you know uh change my whole aesthetic let's go spend all my money and let's go like have sex with this random person you know <laughs> like that's venus and scorpio I'm not saying that if you have Venus and Scorpio, you're necessarily like that. This is just for a short time, generally speaking, and just metaphorically speaking, okay? But, um, and I have more about this on my Instagram too that goes into more detail. So if you do have Venus and Scorpio, you may re relate to my post on there a little more. But um, anyways, but she's opposite Uranus in freaking Taurus, right? And so where she wants to be, right? Like she wants to be, in Taurus, that's her, that's her home, that's her home sign, right? But she's in Mars's sign. So she's like across from her home, like she can see from the city where her home's at over there and Uranus is there. And she's like, oh, damn it. Like, I wish I was there, I'm jealous, right? So, but Uranus could be like, oh, well, like, you know, call her up and be like, oh, well, make the best out of it. Like, you know, like take some risk and shake things up and get a little wild. And so that's kind of where we're at with this Venus opposite Uranus, right? Like Venus could be tempted. So we could be tempted. There could be some temptation, some desires, some urges, some cravings, some intense urges that we have that Uranus is like, fuck it. You know what I mean? Um, do it. <laughs> and so we want to, uh, watch out for that. This could be a great thing though. You know, this could really get us out of our comfort zone. It could get us to do something that we've been wanting to do for a while, but like haven't had the balls to do. And now we have the balls to do it. But this could also be very impulsive and secretive and shady. And so you do want to watch out for that too, where you're not like, you know, I don't know, like doing something like weird and different because it would be liberating, but you're not really thinking about 
the consequences or the destruction that could follow, you know what I mean? And then afterwards you're like, oh shit, you know what I mean? So, I mean, this is all in all though, they're kind of working together because Venus rules Taurus. So, um, and then Mars is in Venus's sign. So I don't think it will really get like that bad, but I do think this is definitely a time where we are wanting to liberate ourselves uh, through our desires, um, where we are wanting to set ourselves free, to feel good, to find the beauty in something a little darker, deeper, more intense, or risky. This could also be a time where we are doing something fun, exciting, or impulsive with other people, our partners, um, in relationships. Uh, this definitely is a massive, massive time for relationships, like this whole next month is a really big time for relationships so definitely expect some relationship uh themes to be on and popping over like the next month so so yeah so just pay attention to those things but this could also be a really great time where we're having like some kind of wake up call or where we're set free from something that may seem like not great at first like the way i see this is like someone that we were kind of just starting to get to know and starting to get to like could like just all of a sudden drop off the face of the earth or tell us that they don't want to be with us anymore. And then we're like, oh, okay. And at first we're kind of like, damn, that was shitty. Like, am I not good enough? Whatever. But then it forces us, like Venus and Scorpio, forces us to kind of like sit with our pain for a second and uh, process things. And then we come out even better and feeling even more free and liberated than we were before. And we're like, thank God that happened. You know what I mean? So. Um, so those are some different like examples of how it could play out or some possibilities, but you definitely will be feeling some eccentricity, eccentricity with your style, your pleasure, your relationships, friends, um, money. Uh, so some sudden unexpected stuff could be coming up over the next week. So definitely pay attention to that. So that is it for the general chart, what's going on in the collective. So definitely uh, let me know if uh, you guys see any of these themes down below, if you relate to any of these themes. And we are gonna go ahead and start on the zodiac signs. Make sure if you haven't already to leave a comment down below. Uh, it really helps my channel out and it really helps my videos out and I would really, really appreciate it. I love hearing your guys' feedback on if this stuff resonates, if you're seeing it in your life, what your story is. It also helps me as an astrologer to see the different ways that these things can play out. So um, if you are noticing any of these themes in your life at all over the next uh, couple weeks or even longer, definitely let me know down below. So let's go ahead and get into the signs. Alrighty, so starting with Pisces. So for Pisces, this full moon is happening in your sign in your first house if you're Pisces rising. The first house is all about your appearance, your body, your health, your vitality, your self-expression, what you think about yourself, and it's all about you. Um, so this is definitely a time of getting back to you, but also seeing a different side of yourself. You know what I mean? Um, it's definitely a time where you are kind of like possibly seeing a different side to things that may have happened back in March during, you know, uh, your season. And so this full moon could be kind of wrapping things up or some peak moments from that time period. Um, so those are some things that you could see with the full moon. But on top of that, you're ruling the you're ruling planet Jupiter is in Aquarius in your 12th house. So this could also be a time where you are letting things go or where you are possibly doing something a little bit more behind the scenes that is very spiritual that could really like progress on uh, who you are and certain ideals that you have about yourself and your life and your lifestyle. Um, so those are some other things that you could be seeing come up over these next couple weeks. Now, we also have Mercury trining Jupiter um, in Libra and Libra for you uh, is your eighth house. And so this is definitely a time where you are possibly trying to mediate or negotiate or figure out um, certain financial obligations, money that's owed to you or money that you owe to other people, possibly even certain collaborations or contracts that are financial or your partner's money as well, or your partner's resources could be coming up around this time. This could be somewhat a time of changes or endings in some way, but I also feel like it's for a greater good. And I think that you will feel that um, very soon. I think that that will be prevalent to you that 
what may have seemed like what may have seemed like something that wasn't the greatest or something that you had to give up or that you had to avoid or that you had to leave behind or let go of may end up actually working out um, and it may give you hope for something different or something new. So that's also something that you could see. Uh, you do want to be careful around this time with certain friends or friend groups or uh, certain aspirations that you have. Uh, this could also be shedding light on something in that department as well. And then with the Venus, uh, you know, moving into opposition with Uranus um, over this coming week, you're going to feel that in your third and um, ninth house, which deals with education, learning, um, you know, also your community and short travels and siblings and distant relatives versus long travels and, um, you know, foreign places and uh, stuff like that, like getting out of your comfort zone versus your comfort zone. And so um, there could be some stuff happening here where maybe there is uh, some news that you get or something unexpected that happens where it changes your thinking on something or, and you have a desire to um, maybe learn about something that seems a little bit more taboo or that seems a little bit more dark or uh, different or deep or something like that. So that could also be something that you see coming up around this time. And that is what I'm seeing for you guys, Pisces. Uh, definitely let me know down below if that ends up resonating. As always, I love hearing your guys' feedback. So moving on to Aries. So for Aries, this full moon is happening in your 12th house with the ruler uh, of this full moon in your 11th. So this could definitely be a time of kind of endings for you too, Aries. I was just talking about that with Pisces, where you are really seeing another side of something. You're seeing things that need to be let go. You're seeing things that, um, you know, need to be uh, resolved or um, dissolved in some way possibly as well. So it's definitely a massive spiritual time though for you, Aries. You could be having a lot of like spiritual experiences, synchronistic messages, um, you know, intuitive hits, feeling very tapped in definitely a time to pay attention to synchronicities and spirituality. This could be a time where you are needing some spiritual time off or you are needing to get back into connection with some kind of spirituality, some kind of faith for sure. Um, this could also be a time of escapism though. So you do want to watch out for that. Like where are you trying to escape reality or where do you maybe need to escape, escape reality? You know, maybe you need a break. Maybe you need um, to retreat in some way, get away in some way. Um, yeah, and this could also be a time where you're kind of seeing through different illusions as well. And that could involve somehow certain uh, career stuff or certain uh, goals or aspirations, friend circles or networking or societal issues. Um, this could definitely be a time where, you know, either you are trying to find your way or trying to find uh, a certain path or where maybe you are helping others do that, where maybe you are helping people that are lost or confused in some way, shape or form. And then we also have uh, all of this Libra energy, which is in your seventh house of relationships. So, um, you know, Mercury is trining over to Jupiter in your 11th. So this is definitely a social time for you. If you're making any plans around this time or um, having any like conversations or whatever about the future or about where you want to go or how you want to progress with something, just be prepared that it's not definite just yet. Okay. Something may come back around. This is still a process. It's still going to be ongoing. Um, and there also may be some difficult conversations or some difficulty happening with a partner or a friend or certain people in your life regarding career or authority or something like that could come up as well. So you want to watch out for that. This is also a time with Venus opposite uh, Uranus in your second and eighth house of some possible turbulence or unexpected uh, things coming up when it comes to finances or your partner's finances. Um, so yeah, you kind of want to watch out for that too. Uh, or even like impulsive decisions in some way. So that could be another thing. So anyways, let me know down below, Aries, if that resonates. Um, as always, I love to hear your guys' feedback. 
And let's move on to Taurus. So for Taurus, this full moon for you is happening in your 11th house sector of other people, friends, uh, social groups, etc. Um, so this could definitely be a time that is culminating or bringing something to a peak regarding like-minded people within your life, regarding networking, social media, um, certain goals and aspirations that you once had um, that are kind of coming to this peak moment. Um, certain ideals that you have about like your future, where you want to go, and the kind of people you want to do it with um, are definitely being brought up around this time. And this could also somehow involve your career or certain career connections, certain career networking um, in some way, shape or form since the ruler of this new moon or full moon Jupiter is in your 10th house of Aquarius. Um, this could definitely involve reputation and uh, possible authority figures, career advancement, what you wanna do in your life, your, your legacy, et cetera. Some other things that you could see coming up over these ne over this next week or so, uh, we have you know Mercury in Libra uh, squaring Pluto uh, in your ninth, so in your sixth and ninth. So this is definitely a time where you are possibly trying to make decisions or figure something out or mediate something um, in terms of your day to day work life and your day to day habits, your health. Uh, or other people's in some way, but it could be somehow conflicting with certain beliefs or certain worldviews or politics or legalities or authority figures in some way, certain rules even, or certain ethics or morals, either of yourself or others. And so you could see those themes coming up as well. And then we have Venus opposite Uranus, and Uranus is in your sign, Venus is in your seventh. This is definitely a time of some possible unexpected events or situations coming up regarding relationships where you could be feeling like you want to break free in some way or liberate yourself in some way uh, through a relationship or through some kind of desire um, or something going on with your partner that may seem unexpected. I feel like the unexpected part is kind of coming from you. The turbulent part is kind of coming from you. The more like desire to, you know, go into something that may be a little bit too much or something could be on your partner's side or a friend's side or somebody close to you. So, um, so yeah, you do want to watch out for that. But that is basically what I'm seeing for you, Taurus. So Gemini, this full moon is happening in your 10th house of career, uh, your future goals and achievements, what you want out of life, uh, where you know your reputation, authority figures, your legacy. So you could definitely be seeing these themes come up around this time where you are, um, you know, kind of getting new ideals about what it is that you wanna do and um, seeing long-term, you know, ideals and visions in regards to what it is you want to do in the world especially and this could involve uh, this could involve some kind of you know this could involve some kind of social issues or politics or uh, ethics morals law education in some way as the ruler of this full moon is in your ninth house of those things right um, society at large or um, helping progress uh, society in some way so, and this full moon could be like kind of showing you that. Now, on top of that, we have Mercury in Libra, which is in your fifth house of love, romance, pleasure, leisure, uh, children, squaring Pluto in your eighth. So this is definitely going to be a time where um, maybe there are some pretty extreme decisions being made, but you need to make sure that someone is not uh, running some kind of power game on you or uh, using certain threats or power dynamics or uh, something along those lines to pressure you into making some kind of decision. Um, this could also be a time where possible good things come from destruction or uh, extreme changes or losses or, um, you know, some kind of change to begin with, especially regarding your finances, money that you owe or money that you owe to other people, um, to kind of have the life that you want or to be able to have the fun that you want. There's some kind of like, you know, deep seated stuff that needs to be faced here. It could be fears or phobias as well. 
Um, it could be certain corruption within authority in your life or within, you know, certain power dynamics within your life as well. So that could definitely be something. You could also be finding some kind of motivation um, for a passion regarding uh, investigation or digging deep into something as well. So on top of that, we have the Venus opposite Uranus transit uh, coming in this week. And we have Venus in um, your sixth house opposite Uranus in your 12th. And so what we could see here are um, some events regarding possibly health and uh, diet and things that you may need to do to maintain your health, certain desires that you have when it comes to your health and also just your day-to-day -day life, things that you need to do to maintain a schedule. Um, basically the unpleasant things that you don't wanna do but that you know you need to do. Venus here is kind of helping you like yeah, okay, let's make things fun, but there could also be an urge to like escape them for something that's more desirable, or um, there could also be some unexpected events or changes that come up. Um, but this could also be a time where you're really wanting, like you have certain desires to do something that would set yourself free of this baggage that you have in your day-to-day -day life in some way. Um, so yeah, definitely let me know down below if that ends up resonating with you. Uh, as always, I love to hear your feedback. And um, we are gonna move on to Cancer. So Cancer, uh, this full moon for you is happening in your ninth house of higher learning, education, foreign lands, foreign travel, um, you know, foreign experiences, getting out of your comfort, comfort zone, your worldviews, your beliefs, etc. cetera. So uh, you could definitely see these themes coming up around this time. You could have some restored hope or faith in certain uh, ideals or certain views um, as well around this time. Um, and with the ruler of this full moon in Aquarius, Jupiter, um, in your eighth, this could also bring up something regarding finances or other people's money, maybe your partner's money um, or somebody else going through some kind of uh, you know, financial thing for some, it could be legal, um, contracts, commitments, um, also fears or, uh, you know, <clears throat> going through some kind of change uh, financially or transactional situations. Um, so those are some other things that could come up, but I do think with Jupiter being the ruler and this full moon looking you know, for the most part positive, I think that this is some kind of restored hope or faith in uh, something that may have been a struggle for you um, recently or for a little while now. Something possibly even wrapping back around from March this year. So on top of that, we have Mercury in your fourth house in Libra, uh, squaring Pluto in your seventh house in Capricorn. And so this could be a major time um, where something is revealed or you start seeing something from a different point of view regarding your relationship um, or somebody close to you in your life. Uh, this could definitely be a time of deep conversations or digging something out that maybe you didn't know about, information being revealed uh, or needing to make some kind of changes regarding your home or feeling pressure to make some kind of changes uh, regarding your home and personal life from others in some way. You do wanna watch out for power dynamics here though, Cancer, with other people, and um, you know, really reflect on the decisions that you're making regarding home and family. You're gonna have plenty of time to do that over the next few weeks, so don't worry. Uh, some other things that are going on, Venus opposite uh, Uranus in your fifth and 11th house. This is definitely a time for you, uh, Cancer, where you may be feeling tempted, okay? You may be feeling tempted to do something you wouldn't normally do, um, to liberate or free yourself you wouldn't normally do. This is also a time you could see some unexpected things coming up with love, romance, children, sexuality, fertility. So you do wanna be careful with that around this time as well. Also friends and social situations, um, that's something else that you could see coming up. So that's what I'm getting for you guys, Cancer. Okay, so moving on to Leo, to my fellow Leo Risings out there. 
Uh, this full moon for you, or for us, I should say, is happening in our eighth house sector of other people's money, other people's finances. Um, this is a time where, you know, we've been really reorganizing our own money, our own priorities, our own resources. Well, this is a time where it's like time to ask for help or time to let somebody else like be the one that is maybe carrying the weight um, or even um, work certain financial issues out, basically. Um, this could be your partner's finances or somebody that you're close to. Um, maybe they come, I mean, this could actually be a good time where maybe they come into some money with Jupiter ruling this, right? And it's in your seventh, so it could definitely be someone you're close to. Um, maybe they come into some money or they get an opportunity or you get an opportunity through someone else. This could be resolving old debt or old baggage that's been, that needs to be changed, you know, um, that could come up around this time. Uh, you do just want to make sure, like, you know, that you are seeing things clearly, okay? That's the only thing I would say with this. But other than that, the full moon itself looks pretty decent um, in terms of other people's money, other people's finances, even though it's in the eighth house. So now on top of that, we have Mercury coming into its square with Pluto, which is definitely going to cause an extreme uh, tension on the planet of mediation and the messenger. And so we could definitely see here with Pluto in your sixth, Mercury in your third, a need to um, possibly make some day-to-day -day changes regarding your health, regarding your lifestyle in some way, regarding certain errands, um, possibly needing to communicate about certain things that maybe you've been keeping in on a day-to-day -day basis, certain baggage that you have in your health and day-to-day -day life the work, your work life as well, um, may need to be addressed or, you know, certain issues that you've been having may need to be addressed. <clears throat> this could be also like a time um, of appointments uh, regarding health issues for some or um, appointments regarding issues uh, when it comes to work and really getting deep into it and figure out figuring out like what's going on. Now we also have the Venus Uranus opposition um, in Scorpio and Taurus. And this is a big deal because it's in our fourth and 10th house. So we're feeling like we may be feeling uh, or having some super unexpected events come up regarding home life versus career, right? Um, or where we're wanting to maybe take something that's personal and like put it out there in the open where maybe we need to get something off of our chest really is what this looks like. Like liberating ourselves by getting something off of our chest or by um, doing something unconventional, different, liberating, random, striking, um, shocking, you know what I mean? Um, we could really be tempted to do something like that uh, this coming week uh, to change things up in some way, you know, to add more of our personal lives to our professional lives or to our public image in some way. So, um, so yeah, that's kind of what I'm seeing there for Leo. And uh, yeah, Leo, definitely let me know if any of you guys see those themes down below. Um, I love to hear about it and hear your guys' feedback. So uh, moving on to Virgo. So for Virgo, we have this full moon in your seventh house of other people, other people's relationships, or not other people's relationships, your relationships and other people. Um, so basically, Virgo, you could see kind of like a lot of peak moments or culmination points coming up with uh, either your partner or your relationship in some way or your close one-on-one -on -one relationships in some way. And the ruler of this full moon for you is in your sixth house. So, um, you know, this could be your partner's job, your partner's health, your, you know, certain work that your partner needs to get done where something kind of just like works out. So Virgo, this could also be a time where you're seeing um, certain things with clients or coworkers coming up as well, something like that coming up, themes of that coming up. Um, where maybe, you know, this is something like you're seeing a higher perspective on something. You're seeing how maybe you need to rethink how you're progressing in terms of work or your partner's work um, or something like that. So um, other than that, we have uh, 
the Mercury Pluto square starting um, in your second and in your fifth. And this is something that's going to come back around, so remember that. Um, so your money and your partner's money and you know what you do with your money, your priorities, your resources, basically. Um, in a challenge with Pluto and Capricorn in your fifth house. So, um, you know, possibly children, you know, children couldn't like need something from you around this time or need, you know, you may, some of your resources may go to your children around this time. Um, also, this may be a mediation of your money, your resources in terms of children or in terms of work or things that need to be done um, re or things that you want to do, you know, certain like practical things that you want to do for fun or leisure that maybe you're feeling held back from because you need to reassess your money and your priorities and your resources and your finances basically. So that's something else that could come up. We also have Mercury, uh, or I'm sorry, not Mercury. We also have Venus opposite Uranus and your third and ninth house. So this could be some unexpected events happening um, in your day-to-day -day life with appointments, with the people that you socialize with day-to-day, uh, -day, um, with uh, a car or transportation. You know, this could be a new car or maybe um, at first it could seem like, you know, an expense or like a car expense, but then for some people, but then it could actually lead to a liberation of issues by finally getting a new car. And so, yeah, like you'd have to, you know, it could seem like an expense, but then you don't have to worry. You know what I mean? Like something like that. It may not play out exactly like that. It could for some. Um, but this could also be some news or some information um, or a desire to kind of do something locally or go to some event locally or hang out with someone locally um, where maybe things get uh, a little bit crazy or unexpected or you want to let loose a little bit. Something like that could happen. So. That is what I'm seeing for Virgo. Definitely let me know down below if that ends up resonating, Virgo. And we're going to move on to Libra. So Libra, this full moon for you um, is in your sixth house of the things that you do on a day-to-day -day basis to maintain. You know, the shit you want to do or the shit that you need to do, but you don't necessarily want to do. So your health, health issues, health challenges, um, work, you know, like chores or things that you got to do, you know what I mean? But that you don't necessarily want to do or that you don't necessarily see get recogni recognition for. Also can rule pets at times as well. Um, so this could be something coming back around from March uh, that's bringing up those themes. And it could also involve children with Jupiter in your fifth um, or something that you want to do for fun or leisure or maybe you're finding a way to incorporate fun in the things that you want to do or make the things that you don't want to do uh, like more pleasurable in some way. Um, this could also deal with love, romance, and sexuality in some way uh, as well for some of you. On top of that, we have Mercury in your sign squaring Pluto in your fourth. Um, so this is definitely a time Libra where you could be feeling some intensity in your home and family life. Um, from family members, from your living situation, a landlord or people that you um, live with. This could be a time where maybe you're trying to mediate something going on, a certain crisis or a disturbance or something, a change, uh, but it's just not working. You know, you're having trouble mediating it. You're having trouble doing it in some way. Um, and this is a time where you really are being forced to kind of look at the power dynamics within your home and family life. And you're also being pushed to make your own decisions, even if that takes a while, even if that's a process, right? Um, and you're also learning how to like not let other people rule over your decisions or let your decisions be influenced by, um, you know, other people or other people take authority over you in regards to home and family. And so, um, so yeah, this could definitely be a time where, um, you know, maybe you have a child going through something or maybe your parents are going through something or whatever and you're having trouble kind of, you know, helping them see another side or mediate the situation or something like that. 
could definitely see this coming up and this is going to be something that's going to be coming up off and on over the next month so remember that so you're going to have some time to work through it but it's definitely going to be a time of seeing some big changes that need to be made when it comes to your foundation and your personal life on top of that your ruling planet venus is in scorpio in your second your house of money and finances uh assets and you know your priorities your resources opposite Uranus in your eighth house, which deals with transactional relations with others, what you owe, what other people owe to you, your partner's money, et cetera, et cetera. So there could be some unexpected events um, that happen. It could be maybe some unexpected money or maybe an unexpected expense that ends up leading to some kind of liberation um, or setting you free. Uh, this could also be an impulsive purchase, um, something like that that's coming up around this time. So that is what I have for Libra. Definitely let me know down below if you guys end up relating to that. I love to hear your guys' stories and your feedback. Um, so yeah, let's move on to Scorpio. So for Scorpio, this full moon is happening in your fifth house of love, romance, children, what you do for fun, creativity, where you create fertility, where you find joy. Um, anything that you're doing for fun, you know, you could be trying to go to some event uh, with friends or you could be um, trying to take some kind of romantic holiday or get away or something like that with a partner. Um, or you could be trying to, you know, move or something like that um, because the ruler of your fifth house is, is in your fourth right now, home family foundation. Um, so there could be a lot going on here that with those themes um, that you're seeing come up um, around this time over the next week or so. Um, on top of that, we have Mercury and Libra squaring Pluto uh, and Capricorn in the third house. Um, so from your 12th to your third, this could definitely be a time of needing to reveal or figuring out how to nicely reveal things that you've been holding in or certain secrets or, you know, maybe someone else's secrets, um, something like that. This is definitely, definitely for Scorpio, a time of uh, truths being revealed though, um, revealing a revealing of information. You also may be trying to mediate something or figure something out in regards to another person, person or in regards to certain threats or regulations or rules or power dynamics or authority figures in your local community or local environment in some way as well. Um, this could also be a time of maybe you exposing something or you investigating or researching something. On top of that, we have Venus in your sign opposite Uranus this week in your opposite sign. Um, so this could definitely be a time where you are you have some desires, you're wanting to have fun, you're feeling yourself, you're wanting to feel good, um, but there may be some turbulence or unexpected things going on in the relationship department, unexpected people, unexpected situations, that kind of thing. So that is what I'm getting for Scorpio. Definitely let me know down below, Scorpio, if any of that ends up resonating. If you see any of those themes at all or anything like them or near them or close to them, I would really appreciate your feedback. It really helps me out. Um, so yeah, so let's move on to Sag. So for Sagittarius, this full moon is happening um, in, your, in your fourth house of home, family, uh, your personal life, your foundations, your living situations. So you can definitely see a theme coming up there uh, when it comes to your personal life, your home, your family foundations, etc. Um, this could also be a time where you're maybe considering moving or thinking about moving um, or moving locations or um, where you're also focused on your neighborhood, your community in some way, um, or where you're also focused on uh, transportation, um, a vehicle, or um, something along those lines, uh, friends as well, or what you're doing um, in your community or in your local environment, or like exactly where you live or where you want to live. Um, those could all be things that are coming up around this time. Now, on top of that, we have Mercury in the 11th uh, squaring Pluto in your second. So this could be a massive time where you are seeing somehow themes of 
your money and your resources versus other people, groups of people, social situations, um, your priorities um, versus social situations. And there could be some kind of conflict there. Or even friend groups or organizations, charities, something like that. There could be some kind of conflict there, conflict of interest or um, some kind of, uh, you know, some kind of deep issues that are being revealed. Um, over these next few weeks, you know, um, because this is just now starting and will continue to come up like over the next few weeks. So watch out for those themes. You also have Venus opposite Uranus in your 12th and 6th house. So this could definitely be a time where you ha are having like uh, the desire to maybe get away or do something more behind the scenes. Um, or where there's a relationship in your life that is um, doing that or feeling that way in some way. But uh, there could be some unexpected stuff coming up in the day-to-day -day life that kind of pulls you back to reality um, or some unexpected uh, work stuff or, you know, health stuff um, that, you know, comes up. But I feel like this is also a time of really liberating yourself from uh like certain habits that are no longer aligned with you this could also be a time of that as well so that is what i'm seeing for sagittarius definitely let me know down below if that resonates so moving on to capricorn so for capricorn this full moon is happening in your uh third house of information communication uh, siblings, relatives, your local environment, your neighborhood, your city, transportation. So you could see all of those themes coming up. Also learning. Uh, you could be maybe learning something new or thinking about learning something new around this time. Um, a lot of these themes could somehow involve your money or your priorities, your resources as well with the ruler of this uh, full moon happening in your um, be, or being in your second house. So uh, you could see that coming up as well where Maybe you are finding people that you have shared values with or doing something with people that you have shared values with or shared interests with in some way. Um, or there's something like financial going on in regards to something that you're speaking about or something that you're doing. So that could be it as well. Um, now, on top of that, we have Mercury and Libra in your 10th, squaring Pluto in your first. And so there could be some transitioning going on in your career department um, or uh, with certain authority figures, certain goals that you have. Um, there could be some indecisiveness happening here um, that could really start triggering you or that could really start making you feel as if you need to take control or take power over some kind of situation, but it may not work. Okay, so keep that in mind. And this is going to be, the these are going to be themes that you're going to see over the next month. It's like something that you're wanting to control or do or take power over, or take charge over, um, you know, could, or even something that you're hiding versus something in your career, in your uh, public life, in your reputation. Um, this is a time of like, you know, you may kind of be taking things to extremes in some way as well. So you want to watch out for that too. But those are some things that you could start noticing happening very, very soon, starting this week and over the next month or so. On top of that, we have Venus and Uranus coming into their opposition as well this week. And they're in your fifth and 11th house. So there could definitely be some unexpected events here regarding friends, love, romance, your social life. Also, children, fun, creativity, anything that you're doing for fun. It's like you kind of have the desire to socialize, to break free of like current things that you've been doing where you're feeling stagnant or bored and to do something different basically. So you could see that coming up as well, Capricorn. So let me know down below if you see any of those themes. I'd really love to hear about it, Capricorn. Uh, and we're going to move on to Aquarius. So Aquarius, um, this full moon for you is happening in your second house of priorities, your resources, your money, your assets, your finances, anything that you need that supports the lifestyle that you're living um, are things that you're going to see coming up around this time. Now, the ruler of this full moon is in your sign in your first house. So 
once again, what supports you and what doesn't, you know, or what needs to be let go of or sacrificed that is no longer really supporting you, um, whether it's something financial, material, you know, whatever it may be, or even something emotional, you know what I mean? Um, what needs to be let go of or sacrificed or what culmination point is happening with those things right now? What focus is being drawn towards those things right now, right? So um, those are basically, that's what the full moon's about. And then we also have the Mercury Pluto square from Libra to Capricorn. <clears throat> And this is in your ninth and 12th house. So there could be some stuff coming up around this time that maybe you really start getting into something going on behind the scenes or um, you start investigating something that's kind of hidden or some kind of corruption or there could be some kind of legal uh, thing going on as well or you could be learning about something that is kind of deep and mysterious or dark uh, to do with authority or to do with like the foundation or the history of something in some way. Um, there could also be things that are being exposed or revealed um, regarding uh, your belief systems, your worldviews, the ways that you look at certain things um, could also be happening around this time and you could be really seeing things from a whole different perspective, a whole different side over the next few weeks. So definitely be on the lookout for that. Um, it may be really easy to kind of debate with people or uh, something along those lines, but it's really important to try to find common ground right now. Now, we also have Venus in your 10th house opposite Uranus in your 4th house. So there could be some shakeups or turbulence regarding home and family life this week or certain desires that you have for your future that mean that you need to break away from something from your past or something from your roots. Um, so you're kind of like wanting to liberate yourself in terms of career, reputation, what you're doing in the world, what you're contributing to the world this week. So you could definitely see those themes coming up this week, Aquarius. So that is basically it. That is all the signs. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. If this did resonate, please comment down below and let me know. And uh, feel free to come back and let me know throughout the week as well or throughout the next couple weeks. And uh, I will see you guys in my other videos. Thank you for watching.